paper from me. This I know a lot more about than, than some So of when you saw it from over here, you were like, ah, got to get over there. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, the evil twin brother. Uh, the evil one getting wings. <laughs> yeah. He got wings. <laughs> he did. Oh, so somebody looked like he got wings. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was getting more. Yes. <laughs> All right. So welcome to the print house. My name is Jerome. The print house here was established roughly in the 1680s by a lovely couple by the names of William and Dinah Nuthead. The primary reason why I have this store shut presently is because, well, it's uh. It's a little windy. A little windy. A little windy. And wind and papers don't necessarily mix too terribly well. So, 1680s, William and Dinah Nuthead, they were printers here, the licensed printers here. And their job was to print out court documents, government documents, so licenses, certificates, contracts, acts of assembly, similar to the uh, hard articles that you see posted along the wall there to your right. Mm -hmm. Now, all those documents would be handwritten, which meant that they had to go through a process known as typesetting. And typesetting is the process of taking what's handwritten and making it printable. And it would all start here with your type case. Now think of the type case as your 17th century computer keyboard. In each of these little cubby holes, there's a piece of lead type that has a letter, number, symbol, or blank on it. And you can see from the chart that we happen to have here, it gives the layout of the type case. And you'll note that all of the larger capitalized letters are in the top portion of the type case. All of these smaller little letters are in the lower portion of the type case. But this is where you get your phrases, uppercase letters and lowercase letters. This mm -hmm. is the case where it comes from. Now, an individual known as a typesetter will grab their 17th century computer screen, it's called a composing stick, and what they'll do is they'll set every piece of let, uh, every letter of every word in here, upside down and backwards, um, one letter at a time, piece by piece, all right? Now, one of the ways that a typesetter will make sure that, or that ensures that, every, that all of the lead type is facing in the same direction is that they will is that there's a little groove, a little notch inside the lead type. And that groove, that notch, lets the typesetter know that that is the bottom of the lead type. Now once you have the line set and made, we'll move that into a square frame known as a chase. And then that chase is moved into the coffin of the press. And the coffin in this case is just a box that holds up. Now the paper that they used would have been imported from England. It was known as linen paper or rag paper. And the idea is that they would take their old linens or old clothing, put it into a vat of water, let it decompose over the course of six weeks to about two to three months. And when the fibers started to rot, they would beat the fibers out of it, add in some glue, add in some horsehair, sift, strain it, press it flat, let it dry, and then hmm. you would have yourself some linen paper. Now, uh, has everyone here held linen paper or felt linen paper before? Show of hands. Mm -hmm. All hands should be up. <laughs> uh, have you ever felt a US dollar bill before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same stuff, different recipe. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that recipe is uh, percent is various percentages of linen and cotton. Um, does anybody know what those what that ratio is or what the percentages are? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you figure that out, I have a working press. We can work something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, paper that we're going to be using today is modern pulp paper, paper made from trees. Set that in my frisket over here in between the dog ears. Don't worry, dog, no dogs were harmed during the making of this. Or the, mm -hmm. nope, this is a tendon, this is a frisket. I'm always getting the two confused. So we have the paper set. Now the ink that they had used was imported from England. It was a mixture of linseed oil, pine tree rosin, and lamp black. Now lamp black is nothing more than the leftover burnt remains of cattle wicks, so it's an old fashioned way of saying so. Hmm. Now apprentices known as inkers or beaters will grab these ink balls right here, which are nothing more than hollowed out pieces of wood stuffed with soft material and covered in leather. And they'll get a little bit of that ink on here, massage the ink until it was evenly distributed, and then beat it onto the type. Now, would you like to join me up here on, on would you like to join me up here and we're trying to join? Go ahead, go give mm -hmm. it a try. I'll film you, you try. Yeah, what, what did I do? He's, He's gonna show you. show you what to do with that. He's go grab one, come on. I was just showing you. Yes. Come on, Jake. <laughs> now what's your name? Joy. Joy, all right, Joy. Go ahead and grab a hold of it. And all you have to do, Joy, is just gently tap on the type. You're inking them. Keep going. 
Push, keep pushing, keep going, that's all right. Get it all over. A little bit more on the, on the lower document over here. That's, that's it. it, yeah. Yep, that's it. All right, I'll go ahead and take that. That should be good. And yes, you can take a seat, Joy. Good job. Nice job. All right. <laughs> so we have the type dates. We have the paper in place. So I'll lower the first one over the coffin, roll the coffin under the platen, which is this large block right here. Now, I will need another apprentice known as a pusher or a puller. There you go, Jack. Uh, and your name? Jack. Jack, all right, Jack. Jack, stand right over here and face me real quick. Here, face me, thank you. Now this right here is called the arm or the tail of the press. Sometimes I'm told known as the devil's tail because the church could not control the printed word. Uh -huh. Go figure. All right, Jack, go ahead and grab a hold of the arm or the tail, and what you're going to do is you're going to push it towards me. All right, it's gonna swing all the way around. What you'll see is that you're working a screw mechanism in this block, pressing the platen down onto the frisket, onto the paper, onto the ink, onto the type, metal bar to the way. Right. Keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming, keep pushing, keep pushing. Keep pushing. Oh, Jack. That's it, you're almost there, almost there. Keep, don't be shy. One more good push. That's it. All right, go ahead and walk that on back. Well done. All right, well, you may take a seat. Now, if all goes well, you should have one freshly inked and printed document by Joy and Jack. Nice. Ta -da. Now, what was just printed was known as this right here is referred to as the master and indentured servant contract. We filled out uh, for those who could not afford their way from England to the New World, mm -hmm. essentially hiring themselves out. They would cut along this central space over here once everything was filled, and cut it in a unique wave or zigzag such that the two pieces would fit together very much like a puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. That way you could see who had which halves of the contract. Mm. Okay. All right, continuing on, 1695 rolls around, 1695 comes, and a, few, a couple of things happen. William Nuthead passes away, leaving his wife Dinah in charge of the print house. Now, it wouldn't be uncommon for the wives of husbands to take over their husband's jobs, especially in print houses like this. It's also the same year that the seat of government moves from St. Mary City to Annapolis. Mm -hmm. So what does Dinah Nuthead do? She packs everything up, moves up to Annapolis, and has to reapply for the position. Well, when she does so, she has to go up against two male printers, two other male printers applying for the same job in a male-dominated profession. That said, in the end, she was the one who actually got the position, becoming who we believe to be the first officially licensed female printer in the new world. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay, in the day of printing. Mm -hmm. Print houses. Thank you all so much for coming. This is okay. yours to keep. Right. Did anybody have any questions?